On today's GTA 5 o'clock, GTA Online, the early verdict, yes we've played it, how it works, new features, playlist customization, microtransactions and much much more. Four days on the Xbox beta trial, we deliver our first impressions. Hello and welcome to GTA 5 o'clock. On this special episode today, we're reporting from the beta trial of GTA Online. Just as we were teasing all weekend on Twitter on at GTA V o'clock. Well, I'm joined today by GTA 5 o'clock producer James Jarvis. Hello. And Andy Kelly. Hello. Who reviewed GTA 5 o'clock for us just the other week. Now, both of them have been playing many, many, many hours of GTA online all weekend, as have I. So we'll be there to deliver our impressions. Uh, to, before we start, I'd just like to say that the beta trial obviously represents a not quite finished version of the game. As a result, we can't bring you any of the footage from that, which is unfortunate. But what we saw was pretty much there, but there were some certain uh, user interface things that probably Rockstar weren't uh, willing to share at this time. Also, the game was running on Xbox 360, so that's the only version we've seen so far. Now, before we really kick on, I just want to give a quick shout out to everyone who's joined our social club crew, which is the GTA 5 o'clock Social Club crew will be all playing together live from tomorrow, Tuesday the 1st. We've also launched a new Social Club crew, which is the GTA 5 o'clock Shadows. Can you see what we've done there? So that should be really good. That's all launching tomorrow. Uh, if you like the video, please click like and do subscribe because we've got a lot of big things coming up this week on the channel. Not least of all, tomorrow we're having a live GTA 5 o'clock GTA Online launch party where we're going to be playing the game live and live streaming what we're doing and if you want to get involved and you want to play games with us you want to get into the comments and ask us questions if you want to get on twitter on at gta v o'clock and just get in touch with us please do that let's share the gta online experience together now we've been through a lot of it already so we can talk you through the initial stages but suffice to say it's looking really really good now no one's played more of gta online than andrew kelly so andy what is your experience of gta online so far um, I love it. I think it's really, really good um, as a sort of companion to the single player. Like, it's really seamless the way it kind of, the two mix in. And it's like, you know, I can see myself playing online for way more than I played the single player because there's so much stuff in there. There's so many missions. It's an, The amount of content is mad. And that's only from the beta. They're going to be continually adding stuff and... and uh, players are going to be adding stuff as well. So it's really, you know, I can see why they made it a sort of separate entity from the single player because it's so insanely huge. James, what's your like top line feeling about it? I thought I thought it was great as well. Um, I It's getting to the stage where like you almost, you don't really need to play a lot of other games. Like at the weekend, I spent 40 minutes playing golf. I don't even like golf or <laughs> block golf games, but I was just there and someone invited me and I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'll play a bit of golf, and I won, which was exciting. <laughs> oh, that's double good. Um, but the, one of the main things, one of the big highlights for me was going online, being put into the world, and then as I was put into the world, like three cop cars went zooming past me, chasing this other player, and I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." So I got in my car and like chased him along, and joined like the police pursuit with him. And he'd, he ended up he had stolen one of their SWAT vans. Oh. They, were, they were pretty sad about that. And that's like another <laughs> human player who'd done yeah, that. Yeah, and it? he was just being chased through the whole of the map. Obviously, the whole map's open from the beginning. So I just like followed him around and then disappeared. And a couple of minutes later, I was just walking around the street and found the abandoned SWAT car like under a bridge that he had hidden mm. down there. And there were loads of like burnt out cop cars around it that he'd obviously like exploded before he got <laughs> he got capped. Now, and Andy, is there like a key moment like, from your play session that sort of <clears throat> defines it for you? Well, yeah, like the, you know, the the in the single player, the the way the physics and you know will create these moments of random sort of chaos. That's like amplified when real people are involved, mm. obviously. Um, so you know, there's a lot of moments like like James said there, where you just see like stuff happening, like you know. You just see a player like buzzing over you in a fighter jet or something like. Or you just see suddenly loads of explosions around you and a tank will rumble past. Um, but I think like one one moment uh, that stuck out for me. This might make me sound a bit mad, but um, <laughs> uh, I was I was like AFK and I was like doing something else and my character was waiting outside the hospital like after I died, and um, some like some dude came and like stomped me to death while what? I was idle 
like you know, which is pretty pretty bad. And I was like, oh no, I, I was still doing something else. And he did it again. <laughs> so I went right. That guy, I'm putting a I'm putting a, a bounty on him. And you can actually put bounties on people in game, but I didn't do it with this guy because I couldn't figure out how to do it. But I decided that I'm never gonna stop following this guy <laughs> and killing him. So I was like. Uh, you know, no country for old men. Mm. I was like, Javier Bardem. <laughs> and I was like, everywhere this guy goes, I'm going to be a shadow. I'm going to be waiting behind corners. I'm going to be <laughs> smashing it over cars. And I just hounded this guy for ages, killing him, killing him, killing him. Because you can find people on the map. Um, you know, if you click on it, you can find their username and track them. And I just hounded him. I was like landing on him. And I it was like, I, I, there was a little period where I didn't see him for a while. Because I was off getting a helicopter from Travis <laughs> Airfield, and I was just hovering above him silently as he drove around doing stuff. And I like landed on his car and killed him. I can't believe you're him. one of those guys. It's <laughs> no, so but that, annoying. But that, no, but he's no, but he he brought it on himself. <laughs> he killed me while I was idle twice. And so yeah, that I I was sort of doing a little Anton Sugar thing there. Just before I go into like, because I've I've played quite a few hours, but not as much as both of you. Um, I'm interested in your thoughts on. Do we fear, like Andy said, is it going to turn into a game of relentless personal vendettas like a Lord of the Flies gone mad? Well, I think the good thing about it is Rockstar obviously know that that's a thing that can happen if you let 16 players in a giant world go out and start shooting each other. Like You do get that a lot, but as Andy says, later on in the game, as you do some missions, you meet Lester, and like in the single player, you can ring him up and you can put bounties on people's heads. So you pay a certain amount of money mm. and go okay, this guy now is, I'm going to put a $7,000 bounty on him. And then that player gets marked for everyone else in yeah. that server with a big red dot. So everyone ends up chasing the right. people who are like griefing people. And obviously it costs money, but that that's one, there's a couple of ways actually they've, they've found a way of policing it. So you've got the bounty system. You can also enter passive mode for $100, which is like a trifling fee, you know, for the amount of money you earn. You can turn passive mode on. You appear on the map as like a, a no, like an old no entry sign, and um, people can't kill. They can't kill you. you can, they can run over you in a car. They can shoot you, but they can't kill you. It's a question a lot of people have asked: Is passive mode alright? There's a barrier to entry, but it's so slight. It's only a hundred dollars. Yeah, it's nothing. What stops you? Like what stops you know me going up to you, shotgunning you in the face, and then turning on passive mode so you can never get me back, or like killing you and then instantly turning on passive mode? Yeah, well, I guess you could do that. I, I didn't see any any way of you know, any time it was ever blocked. But when you're in passive mode, you can't do anything. Right. Um, you can't use weapons. You can't bring up the weapon wheel. You're totally, like, powerless. It's just if you want to, like, say you're going to buy some new clothes or something, or put some money in the bank, you put on passive mode. Just so you, in can, case. you can drive, but you can't shoot. No, or... you can't, yeah, you, you can't do any kind of crimes or any, or any missions or anything like that. Yeah, right, with you. So it locks you out of even taking part in playlists yeah. or missions. And, and another thing they've done to police bad behaviour as well is that if you... Are consistently well behaved, hmm. you get a thousand dollars, like at set intervals. Right. So you know, there's that. That's three ways in that in which they there's a kind of natural it's, policing to it. it. It's gonna. It would span into a longer episode than we could possibly have. But the idea of the social dynamics of it, the idea of Rockstar effectively running their own political system, and you could imagine in real life if the prime minister or the president said. Every citizen who behaves really well gets a thousand dollars every month if you're a good boy. Yeah, like that's unbelievable. But this is the sort of game where you can test the madness like that. And yeah. You can test an economy built from scratch, like a bubble economy that's just grown from you know year zero. It's going to be a fascinating thing to watch. I mean, I, I played a few hours. My my gut impression was, wow, it's everything you think it would be. Um, it's probably more polished and integrated than you'd expect in terms of the way it delivers the flow and teaches you things as you go through. Um, standout moments for me, uh, there's all sorts of great things happen just loose in the world, like fun stuff like Andy Detailed and James, but I particularly enjoyed, like there was a, almost like a Mario Kart style mini games. You get into playlists and it gives you lots of different game modes that we'll talk about in a minute. And one of them was like a Blaine County off-road racing thing where I was on an ATV, I think Andy was playing on like a Sanchez, and we were like... Um, no, actually, it was the other way around, because yeah. I remember you, you fell off your bike, and, you, and I saw you like picking up your Sanchez, and I was on an ATV, and I just like crushed you, <laughs> just drove over you. But as you drive, and it's, it's, <laughs> it shows off... The, you know, It's brilliant racing around that part of the world, because it shows off the physics, it's really rolling, you get a load of speed up, you're jumping, you're leaping, you're following the dots. But it was combined with, like quite literally, Mario Kart-style icons. Yeah, so like boosts. You can pick up boosts, you can pick up rockets. And I remember like hearing up behind you, getting a pickup to try and get rockets. Yeah. And it sounds stupid, 
method. And it, it sounds like, hey, that's just what Mario Kart does. But to put that in the context of everything the world offers, like James says, you know, GTA Online has got the potential to be the end of games because it gives you golf, it's got tennis, it's got these racing games, it's got death matches. In between all that, you're sort of like PlayStation Home, but better. Yep. It's got like, RPG progression system. Mm. Yeah. And and the same that you'd have in single player, you're like buying outfits and clothes and hats yep. and beards and Super all that customization yeah. as well. Now, uh, the, the caveat for me is that the theory is great. The limits are, yes, it's only 16 players at once. That's less of an issue. The bigger problem will be and it's difficult to gauge whether this is just a beta issue or not, is like all online games, it's going to be about tech, lobbies, servers, crashes, things not connecting like you would expect them to. Like, you know, we had a, well, I had on Friday an experience of the entire morning running seamlessly, perfect, amazing, and then spent all afternoon struggling to even to connect to other people. Now, that could just be, and probably is, because of the nature of Rockstar actively changing things during the beta process. So it's impossible to prognosticate quite how it's going to work out it, in real it life. It was actually on... I had some issues as well at that time, but on uh, Saturday night it was totally fine for the whole evening without any problems. So, but, I mean, the, the real test is going to be when everyone in the world mm. starts trying to play it at once. And that's the thing, is that they, they're talking about, you know, we're talking about a few hundred people playing it live at once versus when the game actually goes live, there's like potentially 20 million people will be yeah. on the starting line. Yeah. What that does to servers, I really don't know. And this is why Rockstar, I think, put that statement out saying, expect teething yeah. troubles. And no online game in the last couple of years has launched without teething problems, no matter how big they are, how well prepared they think they are. Not a single online game has launched without any... Sort of yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. Problems. I wouldn't expect it to be perfect when it launches tomorrow, or even. I wouldn't expect to be able to connect, like, even for the first couple of hours. If it, just you know, twenty million people trying to connect yeah. to, however many servers. Yeah. It I think yeah. they're going to. Uh, be... I think they might stagger it by region. Yeah, this is a bit, a bit of breaking news. Is that they think they might stagger the launch? We don't know exactly when, who gets it first, and how much they're going to stagger it. But yeah, but I mean, like a lot of MMOs do that. It makes sense because mm. you don't want, it, you know, you want to just like open the gate slightly. Yeah, <coughs> and then yeah. shut it again. Let a few cows in. Yeah. So yeah, that that's a breaking news story. Sort of as we speak, and it might even be out there by the time you listen to this. Because um, again, we're recording this twenty four hours before the launch of GTA Online as we know it. Because I think yeah. Rockstar is still deciding exactly when it's going to hit and where it's going to hit. Uh, it was interesting you said about, um, but when it does run, it doesn't run with too much compromise. I wanted to talk about, like, visually, do we think it is, as they said, identical to yeah. there's GTA less, Five? There's definitely less traffic, mm. but not by far. There also seems to be weirdly less, this might just be a beta issue, but it seems like there's less variety of vehicles where you'll be on the road looking for a car and there'll be, like, endless minivans, and you'll be like, come on, give me, like, a... And, you know, it felt like there was less traffic and a little bit less variety. Um, yeah. But, I mean, it was, like, only very slight. But, you know, it, that's only because I'd been playing single player for 90 hours and any change to the world is, like, I'm acutely aware of it. It's definitely less populated, but not to the extent where... It, it doesn't you, feel like Ghost Town or no, anything. No, it doesn't feel empty. And yeah. you've got, you know, 16 real people playing in that yeah. world as well. So it's there's all this stuff going on. There's still, you know, pedestrians and it's still all the little rich details that make the world feel alive or all that. Mm. You know, like yeah. the people exercising on Muscle Beach and all the little tiny details are still there. So it doesn't feel like you're in a in a big movie set, you know, with, with 16 people. And I agree. It's not like... Um they sacrificed a lot of the richness of the world. I think there is a lesser volume of traffic that you almost see it and go, is there less traffic? And then you, you compare it to single player and go, oh yeah, yeah, there is. But again, that could be a beta trial thing. And that's what we caveat with all of this. It could be a beta trial experience. And also like the level of detail is, is essentially the same. The things you can do are essentially the same. The in-game soundtrack is essentially the yeah. same. It's all there. It feels like the single player experience, yeah. but online, accessed you know, seamlessly, like they promised. Um, what was that? Um, we just mentioned briefly that that little moment where uh, you were in single player as Franklin, and your phone rang, and it was oh, me yeah. and Andy ringing you up. It was me and online on my headset using the phone yeah, to that, ring you in single that player. That my mind. That was really because I, I, yeah, because in your contacts list online you've got all your um, all your friends list. Yeah, so, so I thought I'll oh, ring Dan to see like why is he not in, why is he not connecting, and you were in single player on the phone as Franklin, which was really. Really great. Because yeah, once you've activated online and you've started adding friends to your friends list, when you're playing in single player, when you go into your mobile phone and go onto the contacts, next to like downtown cab company and all your other contacts, 
are your friends. They just appear simply in your phone. So clever. So you like just bring them up. Over your friend. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And you say, do you want to come and play online? They invite them, and you just get pulled into that world. It's it's amazing. That's a brilliant idea in theory. Um, should we talk about now, like what people can expect when they first start playing GTA Online? How it introduces its mechanics, and you know what we're going to get when we get going. Well, when you create your character, um, the, the character creation system is very weird. Before you, when, when you actually first start it. How do you launch it from single oh, player? Oh, well, you just, um, when you, uh, when it is activated, there's a 55 meg update to the game. So most oh. of the data is on the uh, the disc, yeah. all the cutscenes and stuff. There's just a little one that's like an, um, a key mm. that unlocks it. Yeah. Then you can either access it from the pause menu, you can uh, scroll along to online, play online, or more interestingly, you can hold down on the D-pad and the mystery face at the bottom of the character wheel uh, is... How you jump into online, and once you, when you start, there'll be just a silhouette there. But once you've made your character, mm. their face will be there with whatever you know, haircut and whatever cool you've given change them. you've, you've yeah. given. Yeah. And how does it like segue? Is it well, the, yeah, the, it, the bump out? Like, yeah, dum, it goes. Dum, dum. Yeah, because so it will change the time of day to whatever the server's time is. Right. So it might suddenly change to night. But yeah, it does the whole map thing. Where it goes doom, 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 and then it spins over to wherever your character. So the idea is that your character is, you know just another person in the city. Yeah. Um, but obviously, before you've created a character, it goes straight to the character creation menu um, before it, you re even enter the world. And the character creation menu, again, it's work in progress, but we saw the, the basics of it. Mm -hmm. The basics, you know, essentially what it is. So you don't, Let's talk about how that works. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Yeah, there's there's not like the usual sliders, you know, where you select between 50 noses. Bigger ears. Yeah, how your character's appearance, even their stats and their starting clothes is dictated by... Um, the genetics and the and the and the lifestyle. Yeah. So to create the appearance, you pick who their parents are and who their parents' parents are, what race they are. Because um, you could that, choose like your dad could be like African, Asian, European. Same with your mum. Yeah. And you change almost who's got the dominant genes. Mm. So you could say I primarily take my genes from my dad yeah. on the slide, or no, I take them from my mum. It's really quite. I don't yeah. know if it's a bit smoke and mirrors, but it's quite a complex system. Yeah, well, I, I, I you know, randomised it a few times, and it did create tons of different face shapes. You know, it's really, it's a really unique system. And if you've got the collector's edition of the game, um, you can seed in Nico. uh, Nico's potato face or John Marston. <laughs> really? So you can have what like, John Marston as your dad. Yeah. yeah. So you can have a little amazing. bit of John Marston in your face. Oh, you can. Oh, you can have a little bit of Nico in your face. I don't know why you'd want that, but. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. When you, and it's got uh, Misty from GTA 3 as well, and it's got Claude from GTA 3. So you can like have like a, you know, the love child of a Nico weird. and Claude speed. Oh, like a GTA <laughs> pure breed. Yeah. <laughs> I, li I like that. And yeah. I mean, what is the interesting is once you've set your character's face, which kind of is it pops out at the other end after you've chosen your, your parents' it dominance. It sets your eye colour and your hair colour and all that. Yeah. Then you go in and you, you sort of, you know, like in normal games, you get like 24 stat points and you assign them between sliders. It's not quite done in the same way where you assign hours of the day to yeah. different activities, which in turn affect how good you are so at things. I was laughing yeah. at these, because you explain more of them. Yeah. yeah, partying, I think, relates to shooting people in the face. So yeah. the more partying you do, the better you are at shooting. Uh, there's uh, hours of sleep, which has to be a minimum of four, but that doesn't seem to affect any stats, so I'd recommend shoving that down to four yeah. straight away. Yeah. It gives you more points to build up with. Um, there's doing legal work, I think it's something to do with your flying skills, obviously. But something that makes more sense is if your character spends most of the day sitting on his ass at home, his stamina will be low. That, that's a more relatable yeah. example than and the do other you know, ones. Do you know at yeah. the start, because I thought, what's the point in having, when we set up our character, I thought, what's the point in having high stamina? I'll focus on being good at shooting. Now, when we did a death match, you know, we, I won it. But that might just be because, all oh, right, we had the best gun, or we, you know, we had the best brakes, or we were better with the shotgun, or something. But in the racing stuff, particularly the pedaling bike stuff, having low stamina was absolutely yeah. crippling. So you've got to balance out. Like yeah. you can, you know, you you'll be at the start anyway. You can build these stats up by playing, but you mm. will start off with a handicap. You've got to decide what it is. Or you can make a really even balance, mm. but you'll be not too good at. It. You can be really good at one thing, or totally average at everything. Like you know, like any it's like any RPG, like yeah, Fallout or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, and 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 also whatever you choose for your lifestyle that takes your starting clothes, which I thought was a nice touch. So if you're like a sporty guy who have like a basketball top and shorts on, but if you're like a guy who does a lot of uh, crimes, who have like bruises and cuts, 
Yeah. So it's, you know, and you can obviously change the clothes straight away. Like one of the early missions is to go to a clothes shop. Mm. But you know, I like the idea that when you appear in the world, you will you'll visually reflect the choices you made, which is quite clever. I think it's a nice touch. Initially, as well, like when we first designed the character, I felt like some of the characters were coming out a little bruised looking, like the guy we made. And unfortunately, we can't show you the footage because it's all part of the beta trial and like Rockstar would rather not share that early stuff. But um, it looked like he'd been punched in the eyes and had like massive under eye bruising and it looked a bit fuzzy to me. Yeah, well, we've... But, yeah, this yeah, morning. Well, yeah, this morning we... Uh, yeah, because it looked like it was a little bit low res, the face that was generated, but we... I mean, James created a new character this morning. Um, it did look a lot better. And it was it? a lot sharper. I think yeah. it's all just beta stuff. Like anything we see here, obviously, is... As we've said, it's subject to change. Subject to yeah. change. Yeah. And the biggest point is with this game, it, it's in a way, it's effectively always in beta because they're launching it as an ongoing rolling product. It's going to be consistently refining, changing, adding new stuff, tweaking things. Mm. You know, we can't like definitively review it at a point in time and say that's the verdict forever and ever because this will be an evolving experience. So, you know, we're talking broadly about what we think of what's there and how it's going to grow. Well, they've got a, a voting system for all the missions mm. uh, and they're going to be presumably, that will dictate future mission design. So if, if one like mission got loads of dislikes, it's like Facebook, you go like or dislike. And so if a, a mission, like a race mission, got loads of dislikes, obviously Rockstar will use that data to go, well, people don't like that type of mission, but they like this type, mm -hmm. so let's do more of that. So like, the, the players are, in a way, informing the mm -hmm. future of, you know, of how the... You know, yeah. add on missions. Yeah, how the game will evolve. Now we've gone from like creating your character. When you've done that, you've got your guy on screen or your, your lady on screen. Where do you go then? Like, where do you appear in the world? Well, you, uh, you you're given like a beautiful little intro sequence that uh, mirrors the intro sequence from the single player. Where you're seeing shots of the city and starts over Vinewood, over the Vinewood yeah. sign, and then you, you go down to Vespucci Beach and yeah. it's really like classically done. Yeah, it's got great music, and then you see like a. A plane landing yeah. at the airport. And and who's, on the, who's in the? You passengers. see your yeah. your man, don't you, sitting Cuts by the window, the window yeah. looking out over the city, which is really nice just to yeah. see yourself in a cutscene. And then who meets you at the airport? Lamar. Lamar picks you up because yeah. because this is set before the events of GTA Five, right? Not yeah. much before. Yeah. yeah, I think so. That's what we were told by Leslie Bates. Yeah. yeah, but then yeah, Lamar meets you, and he's. You know, got his colourful language that you might expect from Lamar. But it's quite funny. He goes, um, "The idea is that he's met you on Life Invader," and he's like, "Oh, yeah. I met you, met you in real life for the first time, man." And, like, and then, like, he gives you, you, you're thrown straight into. He drives you through the city, yeah. And then you're thrown straight into a street race. Now, the idea is that this, as new players are constantly creating characters, the street race will always be full. When we did it, it was just me and Lamar because there was no players online. But when people are constantly creating new characters. It's a thing MMOs do. Well, they'll have a starting mission, so there will always be people in it, and you'll get a, you know, you get a feel for the controls. You get given a car. Mm. You get given a gun. I get, yeah, you get a pistol. Yeah, the market gives a car. you a pistol as soon as he meets you. Because we met on Life Invader. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. anyway, bro, is a piece. Yeah. Get involved. You know, this is Los Santos. And so the early parts of the game is like a tutorial, and Lamar's kind of showing you the ropes. So you'll, you'll do the, you do a race mission. Then yeah. he'll send you to go and get some drugs from some dudes in an alleyway. And that again is like, is that showing off a, like a mission marker or is yeah. that about teaching you? Because again, I think it's an element of Rockstar can't assume that every single person who plays GTA Online has played the single player. Yeah. So what they do is, to an extent, is recap the key mechanics. Yeah, yeah, so you get driving straight away. And, yeah. Then the, the drug bust you do is essentially use cover, shoot people in the face, uh, you know, all the things running. Yeah, recover, like a lot of the game mods are about recovering an item and delivering it, so it teaches you that early on. And, and then, you meet a couple of the characters like you meet Lamar, you meet a uh, new guy. Yeah, a new guy that we saw in the trailer. Yeah. I can't remember his name no, right now. And Gerald, uh, is it? Yeah, Gerald, yeah. He's like the drug guy, so you do all the drug missions for him and you go back to him. Just like in single player, he's like a mission marker on the map. You can go and visit him and, and just do missions for And him then you get you... Uh, given money to go and buy some clothes. One of the missions is go and buy some yeah. clothes. And the, and it makes you do that, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, and the sheer amount of you know options is incredible. And you, when you go into a clothes shop, you're not limited to that style of clothes. It just brings up a universal menu with every item available on it. Right. And some of them are unlocked. So if you want like a an outlandish zebra print coat or something it'll be like I'm not sure that's even in it but something <laughs> yeah, like that yeah. is like really is unlocked to a certain level and that, um, that happens within almost like the first half hour with players that mm. you've already you've driven you've shot you, you, oh, yeah, it teaches you, you how to hold up a store as well that's right that's one of the first things as well yeah it, it says hold up a 
the you know the nearest you know quickie mart or whatever. Which which yeah. I think there are more there's more enterable shops in GTA Online than yeah. there are in from the single player game. They're all like convenience stores and things that yeah, you, stores, yeah you go in and and you point your gun at the man and if you've got a headset you shout at the man a yeah. lot and he gives you mm. the money I was doing quicker. that at home yeah I was like give me the give me the mother flipping money <laughs> yeah I was yeah and, and then he, you get like a two star wanted level and you've got to lose it not you get like I was getting like two three grand per yeah, heist that's what you get well you can you can go on like I was going on like a bo- you know if you had like another person it could be like a Bonnie and Clyde thing where someone waits in the car outside oh, yeah. and yeah. you just like hit all the stores across the map in sequence whilst out running the cops. Well, that's that's how when we went to Rockstar North to see the game uh, GTA Online debut, that's how they did it. They mm. had one guy waiting outside, the other guy ran in, and he was like, "Go, go, go!" Yeah. And oh, yeah. Escape together. Sometimes when you, if you, if you, I mean, once you get the money and you put your gun down, sometimes the shop owner will pull out a gat huh. and try and kill you. So what I do is I hold the gun on and I walk out of the shop backwards, <laughs> and I always keep, I always make sure my car with the driver's seat is right there. So I can get in it, and like you hear him occasionally going like "mother flipper," and he was yeah try and shoot you. But you know, there's like a nice little random element to it. I think I was, the money as well as random. I held up a store in sort of South Los Santos where all the the gangs hang out, and there was another guy in the store who like pulled a gun out yeah, on me as I was holding the well. shop, just started shooting. Just an NPC, or sometimes uh, I I robbed a store and another player came in and robbed me. The circle of of life yeah you know, exactly it, yeah. so within half hour you've basically you've done a lot of the basics you can get more involved in the world like when does the tutorial part end like what's the end of that about, there is like a tutorial section isn't yeah, it yeah it's probably about half an hour it's not really that long and then then it says you know you are now free to do jobs in any order you want and then contacts will appear and contacts the first contacts this guy uh, Lamar's friend but as you play as you rise in level, you get phone calls from people saying, hey, I've, I've heard you've been making waves. Mm. And that includes single player characters. Uh, so Lester will ring yeah. you up and go, you know, you've, you know, because he's in the single player. He knows he's got his fingers in all the crime pies. And he goes, ah, I see you've been doing some good work. Do you want to work for me? And then another time you get a call from uh, Trevor saying, hey, you know, like he sees you as like a rival. He's like, hey, you ass, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing like on my turf? And you can start doing missions for Trevor, which is really... It's so weaved into the single player, mm. even story wise, which is kind of cool. And like Simeon's in there for doing all the, the carjacking. Yeah, you'd be cars missions. for Simeon. And I, yeah, a lot of the characters didn't get much time to shine in single player. I fleshed out a lot more here, so you'll see more of Simeon. And, There's some yeah. really good Simeon missions, actually. Like the uh, when you put a bounty on someone in multiplayer, he gets marked on the map. Every now and then you'll get a call, and everyone on the server will get a call from Simeon going, Hey, there's this car I want you to mm. boost, and it's marked yeah. on the map in, with a big green car, and then everyone has to chase to get to that car and then yeah. deliver that to the docks. So even if you get there first and you're driving it away, then you've got like potentially 15 other people who are trying to stop you from delivering yeah. the car, and you yeah. get quite a lot of money for delivering the, the really nice ones. So that's another great thing of like making everyone focus on one goal yeah. instead of just driving around. It's the also world. got like. If anyone remembers from Grand Theft Auto Three, the import export garage, mm. where you could deliver, you had to deliver every type of every model of car. That's back in this, but you do it for Simeon. So occasionally you'll get an, a, a regular car that's not marked, and it will say Simeon wants this. Um, so you take it, you get it resprayed, and you take it down to the docks, and you get like three thousand dollars, which is pretty decent, you know. Right. Um, so you can you, there are, you can make money like without doing traditional modes. You know, you can just go and rob stores and deliver cars on your own. You can actually play it solo, and it's still fun because there's a story, you know, to to follow. So every all the time you're doing stuff, you're earning what RP, which is reputation points. Yeah. Um, isn't there something called JP? What's that? I think that's job points. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. I don't know how that relates to anything unlocking, yeah. but it must do somewhere along the line. There was nothing that when we were playing it, there was nothing that said you must have so many JP yeah. to do this. It was all based on. <coughs> RP. Right. And you're obviously always earning cash. Yeah. Now. Andy, you've played it for like what? How many hours do you think? Probably about fifteen. After like, how much cash did you have amassed after the first fifteen hours? And did you think it was ample to do what you wanted? Yeah, I, I always felt like I had enough money, and you you earn it a lot faster than single player. So I had about must have had about thirty grand when I finished. Right. And it's kind of a there's even a fun little game element to the money where say you're doing a playlist for an hour with mates, yeah. you're earning tons of money. But when you get back into the open world. Someone can rob you, so the you, the idea is you you find a cash point and you mm. put it in the bank, so you've got two two 
accounts, you've got money in the bank that you can use to buy stuff in stores. You've got cash that's on you, but you need cash on you to enter certain missions or do certain jobs, like as an upfront fee. Um, but yeah, so there's that always tense moment where you're like, I've got to get to the bank. I've got 20 grand on me. And that, and that do that people kind of know bits. you've got 20 grand? Well, no, but up? you know, but if they, if they kill you, you know, they can they It all can rob spills you. out over the floor. That's the bit that's sort of really terrifying and exciting. If you've just finished like a really long playlist of like eight things, yeah. you're probably going to have like 15, 20 grand on you. And obviously the people in that playlist know that you've been winning and stuff. Hmm. So then you're there going, driving around the city going, we really need to find a cash point and we need to avoid yeah. all the players and get to a cash point. And weirdly, the cash points aren't marked on the map. Yeah, that's one oh, thing. No. I, that's one thing I found like a little bit, I mean, it did heighten the tension, but I would like it that if like, if only not, if they marked everyone on the map, it would be too cluttered. But if it just shows you any in the vicinity, mm. Would be helpful because you're just driving along looking for the little maids bank logo you know which can be quite maybe that's yeah. the idea the idea is to make yeah. it tense and again maybe that would be balanced you talked about playlists there can yeah you we explain, should talk about them explain most. how they work and like how you invite friends into your game and interact well the, the playlists are where the the meat of the game is you know where it feels like you know more traditional multiplayer where you'll um so you'll pick up a job in the world. There's markers all over the world, like blue circles. So someone yeah. picks up a job, and everyone in the in the server will get an invite. So people will flood in. You know, you you do a race or whatever. It's invited on their phone, and so everyone, yeah. you'll be driving along, and you'll come you up. You get with a text a, message, a message saying yeah. so this player has started. You know, golf, and mm -hmm. you know, do you want to join? Um, but what once you've finished that round, you you get a grid of six squares, and it'll be six randomly selected missions um, from all over the map, and what types player, of missions are they? Well, play, yeah, well, players can vote, you know, what they want to do. But, yeah, so, I mean, there's so many missions, examples off the top of my head. Uh, basic stuff like a cycle ride, a cycle race on Vespucci Beach, off-road races like Dan talked about. Yeah. Uh, weirder stuff, like there's a mode where one team's on dirt bikes and they have to get to the other, mm. you know, a certain point in the map. The other team's in fighter jets. Wow. That was called a uh, top fun. I played yeah. that one. So and I think it's like up to sixteen. Yeah. So you can have eight fighter jets against eight people on bikes. I think you start in the prison. Yeah. And you've got or, to go across or the desert. Fort Sancudo, and you've got to get to the port. Yeah. And yeah, I played that one. It's amazing. You're just on the bike, and every now and then you just hear the jets coming behind Zoom. you, and then there's just rockets all over yeah, the you floor. Yeah, explosions, and like you'd be weaving between wow. explosions, you know, and and on your like dirt bike which one hit and you're dead so it's really intense as you're like bounding over the countryside so you, you see these six in a grid like yeah. you, you decide all of you can say like six of you might say vote yes for one yeah or well, you can vote to them. refresh the six so if you don't like any right. of them um, almost like replay last mission or yeah return to return to and if they say they were all your actual friends from your friends list you, you could be on the headsets talking and say yeah come on let's all do the you know top yeah, fun yeah. mission so you'd be orchestrating it that way as and well. And because the, there's the voting system, so you know if you see each mission has a rating as well based on player votes. So if you go, oh, should we try that race? And you go, ah, oh, it's only got like, you know, it's got a really low score. It's like a percentage thing, isn't it? It's yeah, like sixty-eight percent like this mission. And these, like, eh. and they've all got like a description. And but what's really interesting is that eventually these missions will be made by players, and you can any any mission that Rockstar have made, you have the exact same tools they had. To right. make them, and so instead of author rock star, you know, say author, you know, James, and it'll have his description of the mission. It'll be his mission. So it'll be it's like an endless stream of DLC, basically. Could we then, in theory, let's say the GTA Five o'clock create a GTA Five o'clock custom playlist themed around a particular like, uh, you know, set of uh, vehicles or clothing yeah. or a vibe or well, a theme. You know, the, the editor. There's a there's two there's a basic editor for just you know anyone can go and with any skill and place checkpoints and make it, you know, just make a race or something and just give it a description. But there's also an advanced side to the editor where you've got like scripting tools so you can script uh, AI behavior, you can script hmm. what type of, so say you want to do like, make a mission like the Italian job, you can script it to, for all the players to have like different colored minis and you can make the race go through the city streets and down stairs and, and you can script, say you want a truck to go by at a key moment we have to drive under it or something, you can script that truck to move in. Um, I don't know if this functionality will be available from the start, but I have, you know... These are the plans. Yeah, yeah. That, and that is really amazing, the fact that pl players now can make GTA missions and there'll be an endless supply of them online. And if you're making one, you can you can even, like, test it with your friends so, like, they can... 
if you don't want to make it live yet, but you want to test it with other people, you can invite them into your private like beta test of your level. Wow! Like the this this the potential for it and the the scale of it is really you know amazing. People are going to be playing this for hundreds of hours. So you've yeah. got Rockstar's missions, and they're going to be releasing DLC, but you've also got players releasing a constant mm. stream of. Obviously, there'll be like loads of rubbish ones, but the voting system will make sure that the good ones float to the top. Yeah, get to the top. And when you're playing a playlist, like, is it easy to say we wanted to play a dirt bike, a dirt bike race again? Is it easy just to click replay, or do you have to go in and revote for it? No, you can. Yeah, I think you have to revote it. Um, I don't know if there's a way of searching, like filtering a playlist. Say, I just want off-road missions. You know. Uh, there must be a way. I, I've not. There must be a way of filtering it. But yeah, I like the random element where you go. Oh, let's do a base jump. Mm. Oh, let's do a race. Let's do a death match. Let's do a mission. You know. So. It feels really varied, and like we were saying about stats, it just plays a different player's skills. Where I felt like I was getting humiliated in the driving stuff, but then won a death match. So it gives you a little pick me up. Yeah, yeah. And you get your you well, know, your RP back up and some win some money. It gives you a based on your. Uh, there's a voting system, a betting system. We can bet on other players yeah. for a match, but it gives you like a a title depending on your stats so on a bike race if your stamina is low it will say out of shape or on someone whose stamina is high it will say athlete you know so you've got like a you get titles based on your Hmm. stats which is kind of cool okay so is there anything else we want to talk about within GTA Online we've not touched on Uh, there's a couple of things are just nice to mention I think Uh, when you're in if you're not driving the car that you're in and someone else that you know is driving Obviously, we know you can change the radio station and stuff and do that. But if you don't touch the controller or you just hold B or circle and thing, you can just like watch the dynamic camera. So you can just someone else will be driving along, yeah. and you can just be sitting in the car with oh. the whole dynamic camera going that, on. That's brilliant, actually. Is if you're in a like a, a death match or a race and you are out of that race, or if you're in a game mode like a particular cops and robbers style game mode and you're out of it. You can spectate those that are left, yeah. and it gives you a series of left and right D-pad taps with filters to view yeah. the action. You make it look like Weasel News, like a police chase. Yeah, and there's like a sort of 80s neon effect, this sepia tone, all these different filters. Then you can adjust the camera angle and, and sort of free prescribe it. You can have set dynamic angles. It makes viewing like really fun, and you, again, you can track up and down the player you want to track. So like when I died, I was like, oh man, I'll see how Andy is doing. And I just moved it to specifically watch you. Yeah. And I think I could like talk to you while you were doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, there's another nice little touch is if, it's a, if, you're looking, if you're trying to locate a friend, obviously the map's really big. If they're nearby and you hit B or circle, the camera will focus on them, just the nearest friend, so you'll be able to you know, navigate to them. It's amazing. So anything more to add? Um, in terms of money, I saw... Apartments are reasonably expensive. They're like yeah. hundred thousand. Probably you can go on the the Dynasty Eight website. Because yeah. that's you, another yeah. thing. All the website stuff is is in multiplayer. And as the well. stock market as well, which will be affected by player action. So if Isn't you rob the, loads the of the Borsak market, would be yeah. Life, so it? if you rob a certain type of store, a lot of the you know stock will go down. I think that's how it works. Did anyone here buy a property? I bought a garage. Okay. Uh, which is just you know the starting. Uh, there's an achievement for buying a garage, buying an apartment, and having an insured car. So those are like the three right. kind of goals. So I bought like a rubbish, like lockup, in uh, in Davis or something like you know the, in downtown, or South Los Santos. And yeah, I mean, obviously you've seen in the trailer. There's like a this little grotty garage, and there's a big white like gleaming car showroom mm. type garage. So that is another that will give you that sense of progression where as you earn more money. It will reflect in you. You'll be driving around in nicer cars. You'll have an apartment. Mm. You'll have nicer suits. You know. So, if you see a high level player, they'll look high level. You know what I mean? Because they'll they'll be shown their wealth. And there's loads of nice things you can do with cars and things. Because we insured our car and put a tracker in it. So that means if you ever leave your car in the middle of the street, it's always marked on the map. So you can always go back and find it again. Yeah. Uh, and if you leave it there, sorry Dan. Yeah, sorry. If, no. If on. you leave it there for long enough, like the police will tow it away. And yeah. then you have to go and like steal it back. And off. people can't uh, yeah. customize own cars, so someone can't take you a nice car and put a lot of stupid dollar sign wheels on it. It's, it's locked. Brilliant new addition in NS Customs to pimping your car, purely because of this thing of people stealing your car. What you can do is it's quite expensive. You can pay for a, an ignition bomb 
in your car. So if someone goes in your vehicle and isn't you, it will instantly blow <laughs> yeah. the car up, which I love. That's another way of policing it, so people might think yeah. twice about. Even sneakier, there's a remote detonation bomb. So you can let someone steal your car and drive around happy as Larry for like 10 minutes <laughs> as you hover your finger on the button and blow them up at any That's time. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. They're expensive add-ons, but again, like you say, they're balancing tweaks. And it's like any high-level performance sports game or online game. The more, you know, the, cl the cleverer you are, the more you know the systems, the more you're second-guessing what other people mm. might do, and it becomes a game within a game. So it's going to be fascinating to see it develop. And I, I think that's the key thing. It really is. It's an active rolling beta almost, even when it launches. It's going to develop. It's going to change. There's going to be problems. There's going to be moments that you won't believe, like how fun and exciting and brilliant it is. Um, I mean, overall, to me, it's, yeah, it's, it's potentially like a really monumental release you know certainly in the world of consoles for something to be so well encompassing yeah. like james says to offer all game types yes yeah, it's, it's got like you know it's like an mmo mm. uh I mean, obviously on a small scale but it's got it's like an rpg it's you know yeah it's like it it's all games and there's loads of really cool things in it that are like extra things like if you're driving around in the world online if you drive around in a stolen car the police will know it's stolen yeah. And then if you drive past the police station, you instantly get a wanted level. So mm -hmm. it encourages you to like always use your own car, the one that you've pimped up there's, and the one yeah, that you really like. Yeah, there's some new mechanics in it. It's not just a complete copy of the single player. There's some new little you know, tweaks in there and new things to learn. As, an, as a package, single player on GTA Online, I don't even know how the, you know, even like five years or however long it took to develop, it's like you, you think how massive it is. What a package though. Mm. Oh, it's, it's two, two giant games, and and like I said, you can play it solo. You obviously have to have an online connection. But there's, if you're totally antisocial, or none of your friends are on your platform or whatever, you can still enjoy it on your own because yeah. there's the story elements and you know the character progression is still there. Yeah. You can still take part in communal games, races, etc., yeah. etc. Um, one final word on microtransactions. Now, I guess we didn't really test them. But what do you think, given what we've heard about microtransactions, do you think they've got the potential to kind of queer the balance in the world? What, or? From what I understand about this is people are thinking it's pay to win so you can just buy the best gun straight yeah. away. But um, this, from what I've gathered, even if you've got all the money in the world, weapons are still locked to mm. your level. Yeah. So you can, you know, say you want to go, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy a money pack for real money and I'm going to buy a rocket launcher and a carbine rifle you can't until you've leveled up enough to unlock that tier so that's what i understand maybe this microtransaction will let you bypass but from what i understand it's just money an in-game currency is useless if you don't have the weapon unlocked for your level yeah from what it looks like from all the shops that we've been in and all the online purchasing things i was looking at the only things you're going to be able to buy with loads of money is like a really nice house yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. That's it, yeah. yeah. A garage or a house um, or... Or like cool clothes or special yeah. unique items. Even, sort of even cars are tiered. So when you go up a level, you unlock... Mm. Like you get an email from Elitis saying, oh, you've unlocked the Maverick and the Crop Duster. You know, So you can't go, I'm going to buy a fighter jet. Even yeah. the vehicles yeah. are tiered to your level. So I think that's how they're going to get around the microtransaction thing. I mean, I'd hope, you know. Because yeah. I think, Dan, you were looking in a shop when we first did it on uh, on Friday. You were looking at all the, like, clothes, and you're like, oh, I really like that one. And you're like, you can't have that one, Dan. That one's locked to level 20. Although, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Collect locked. Sorry, yeah, a lot, of the, a lot of the cooler clothes are locked to start with. But uh, collector's edition players will start with uh, a pretty nice bullpup shotgun and a, a Desert Eagle. So, you know, and you an might electric car. Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah, <laughs> actually, you get a free garage as well. So, you know, th those players will have like if you consider like a slightly nice shotgun without having to earn it. I know. still think fundamentally, though, it's about, for example, in racing, being good at steering, racing, yeah. and having good reactions. If you're in deathmatch, it's about having the right techniques yeah. and using cover and doing all the things that good deathmatch does. I don't think fundamentally, I mean, whilst it's nice to have this extra stuff. You've got to be good at the game yeah. to progress, and that's what I see from it. And the thing in deathmatch as well is there are weapon pickups in and around that arena as well. Yeah. So even if you haven't got access to a <clears throat> shotgun and the submachine gun, just go and pick one up. You can just go and run over it and use it for that game type. Okay, so well that's our early verdict on GTA Online based on four days play. That's obviously going to evolve as the game evolves, and as everyone starts playing, we start playing with you online. It's going to be really great fun. Uh, if you like the video, please click like and please subscribe because we've got loads more on the channel this week, including, we're hoping, a 
all day or a few hours. We're not sure yet. <laughs> you um, don't sell it. Yeah. It's all day. I don't want to say all day because we have to sleep and see various <laughs> loved ones. But um, we're going to have a live stream launch party. Details on the Twitter at GTA V o'clock. Check computerandvideogames.com website, which will have more information, or our Facebook page, which is facebook.com backslash GTA V o'clock. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking um, about the game, playing the game with you, and answering all your questions live. So please do get involved. Ask us questions, we'll be able to answer them, play it together, it's going to be great. So, there we go. GTA Online is here. I can't believe it. The pace of GTA 5 is too much for me to keep up. Regular GTA 5 o'clock on Wednesday, where we'll be picking up on all the threads of the conspiracy. Thank you so much for all your work in searching the big GTA 5 conspiracy. I should say, on online, that mural is the same. I went and looked at it. It's still there. Everything's still the same. Ah, the mural on top of Chiliad. Yeah, that's still the same. Uh, I went to the docks, where you're meant to take £500,000 cash, but I didn't have the cash, so uh, nothing oh. happened. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't say. So, so there we go. So yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll see you again soon on GTA 5 o'clock. Yeah.